Pastor Mike here. I want to talk about the millennium, or 1,000 years today. It's written about in Revelation chapter 20, verse 1 through 7. It reads, Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding in his hand the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain. And he seized the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years, and threw him into the pit, and shut it, and sealed it over him, so that he might not deceive the nations any longer, until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be released for a little while. Then I saw thrones, and seated on them were those to whom the authority to judge was committed. Also, I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded, for the testimony of Jesus and for the word of God. And those who had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received its mark on their foreheads or their hands, they came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is the one who shares in the first resurrection. Over such, the second death has no power, but they will be priests of God and of Christ, and they will reign with him for a thousand years. And when the thousand years are ended, Satan will be released from his prison. And let's just stop right there. And so we have the description of the millennium or 1,000 years. And it's mentioned here in Revelation 20, in verse 2, 3, 4, 5, verse 6, and verse 7, and referred to as 1,000 years, six times in seven verses. And it's not my intention to unwind everything in this passage in this video, as they relate to the 1,000 years reference. It'd be too long. Instead, I want to keep a particular focus. And let me just throw down the gauntlet here. The millennium, or 1,000 years, is the description of the time period from Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension up to his second coming on the last day to judge the living and the dead. The Apostles' Creed puts it this way. Christ ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And it's also interesting to note, and as I've talked about Revelation chapter 6 on this platform before as well, each of the six sealed judgments of Revelation chapter 6 take place during the period of time that extends from Christ's ascension up until the time of Christ's second coming, which is described by the sixth seal, which it happens to equal what we're talking about as regards the millennium, or 1,000 years. It is how the amillennialists understand it. Amillennialism views the millennium as symbolic, and not as a literal 1,000-year period. Here are some reasons for that. The first reason is that 1,000 years is used in other places in Scripture as representative of the entirety or whole of whatever is being discussed. This is key. And let me just give an example. In Psalm 50, verse 10, it says... For every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. In the first part of the verse, it highlights how God is the owner of every animal. The entirety or whole of the animal kingdom is God's. And then in the second part of Psalm 50 verse 10, it furthers the point in God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. What it doesn't mean is that the cattle on the thousandth and one hill is not the Lord's, but someone else's. What it does mean is God not only owns the cattle on the thousandth and one hill, but also on the thousandth and two hill, 
thousandth and three hill and four hill and so on and so forth. The thousand here is symbolic. It is representative of the whole. The entirety of the animal kingdom is God's and every last cow too. That's what for every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills means. In Second Peter 3 verse 8, we have the same thing. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. And so a thousand years here is not a literal thousand years, but representative or symbolic of something else. Which, by the way, what we learn here is that the 1,000 years that is symbolically being talked about can really be referred to as the time of God's patience. The next verse, right after this verse, is Second Peter 3, verse 9, which says, The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish but that all should reach repentance. And so this is in the context of a thousand years as a day and a day as a thousand years. The millennium can be seen as the time of God's patience. He is not willing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. And so he is patient and not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness. The 1,000 years as the entirety or whole, the description of the time period from Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension up to his second coming on the last day to judge the living and the dead, the time of God's patience, it can be longer than 1,000 years in length since it stands symbolically for the whole and not for the literal. Jesus has been gone for going on 2,000 years. This is how amillennialism views the millennium as symbolic and not as a literal 1,000 year period. Therefore, we are living in the millennium right now. In his popular commentary on the entire Bible, including the book of Revelation, Dr. Paul Kretzmann describes the amillennialists' understanding of the millennium, or 1,000 years, this way. The book of Revelation is not a history of events given in chronological order, but a series of visions dealing with the chief dangers and the principal blessings which would come upon the Church of Christ. The visions thus supplement one another and dovetail into one another in a composite picture. Only by keeping this fact in mind are we able to understand the present vision. The seer writes, And I saw an angel descending out of heaven, having the key of the abyss, and a great chain in his hand. The angel here spoken of was either one of God's spirits specially delegated for this work, or it was the great angel of Jehovah, the Son of God himself. For it is he that has the keys of death and hell, chapter 1, verse 18. It is he that has the power to bind all enemies, whether material or spiritual. It was the exalted power and majesty of Christ that here appeared with the implements necessary to put an enemy under restraint. This the angel proceeds to do, and he overpowered the dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and threw him into the abyss, and shut and sealed it above him, lest he seduce the heathen yet also, until a thousand years should be fulfilled. After these he is bound to be loosed for a short time. Dr. Kretzman goes on, So the devil, who is fitly called a dragon, a ferocious monster, the old serpent, who has been deceiving men since the time of Adam and Eve, was deprived of his power for a definite space of time. Not that he and his hordes would be absent from the world entirely, 
but they would not be able during this time to seduce also the heathen and make them their allies. It would thus be a season of comparative quiet for the Church of Christ, for Satan would be rendered harmless to the extent of being bound in the pit, which was sealed over him. While the heathen were in his power, were his servants, the spell of Satan's authority would no longer hold them with the chains of absolute tyranny. With the message of Satan's defeat, which went out in the gospel of the resurrection of Jesus, the devil's hold was broken. The length of time for which this condition should obtain was definitely determined with God, though probably not in terms of time as we use it. Dr. Kretzmann concludes, and when the last hour of these thousand years are at an end, then Satan will be loosed for a short while. Then the gospel's phenomenal and victorious march through the nations will be at an end. It is not that the day of judgment will then come, for God has determined that the time of the New Testament should include the thousand years of the gospel's victorious spreading through the nations, plus the little season of Satan's being loose. Satan shall be loosed, not for his own sake, neither for the sake of those during the period of his binding have disregarded the sweet gospel call. Satan is loosed for the sake of the dear children of God. This loosing of Satan is for a fiery trial of God's children, and that it is at the same time a judgment upon the unbelievers is their own fault. In this fiery trial, God intends to purify the faith of his children from all dross and make it strong. Thus, verse 1 through 3 tell us that John saw Jesus, the mighty conqueror, bind Satan, so that through the greater part of the New Testament time, he should not prevent the preaching of the gospel and the winning of the nations for Christ, and that for a little season immediately preceding and ushering in the day of final judgment, Satan should be loosed. And so we've talked about the millennium, or 1,000 years today. It's described in Revelation chapter 20, verse 1 through 7. The 1,000 years as the entirety or whole of the time period from Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension up to his second coming on the last day to judge the living and the dead. The time of God's patience. It can be longer than 1,000 years in length since it stands symbolically for the whole and not for the literal. This is how amillennialism views the millennium.